I'm gonna show you how to build your very own facial recognition ML script. First, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about how this stuff works, and then we're gonna dive right into the code. And you can follow along step by step. And by the end of this video, you will have your very own script that can identify any face within a photo. And it turns out it's actually super easy. I'm gonna give you all the code for it also. And we're gonna be following along through this tutorial provided by Ivan. And Ivan is also the sponsor of today's video, so thank Thank you very much. And I'll talk a little bit more about what Ivan does as we actually use their service for free in this video. So Ivan put together this incredible blog post and tutorial about writing your own image recognition. And from the highest level, here's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna have a starting picture like this. We're going to detect the faces from this starting picture. Then we're gonna be calculating the embeddings on those faces. We're gonna store those in PostgreSQL in a vector column. Then we're gonna take another image of someone from that photo, but not the actual photo itself. We're gonna calculate the embeddings of that new photo. Then we're gonna use that to actually find this person's face within the original photo. And it's gonna work really well. And so for those of you who are wondering what an embedding is, it is essentially a vector representation of text. And vector representations are really good at calculating the similarity of two things. So let's look at an example. So let's start with, we have a sentence, I love parks. And if you can imagine, for every one of these words, we're gonna mark it as one or true. And then if we look at another sentence that is really similar, we can actually do that same calculation again. So let's look down here. The first one again, I love parks. And the second sentence we're gonna be comparing it against is I love croissants. Now both have the word I, love, and now where they differ is parks and croissants. So parks, we have true for I love parks and false for I love croissants, and the inverse for croissants. False for I love parks and true for I love croissants. And this is the simplest way to explain how embeddings work. Now once we have these two vectors, the 1110 and 1101, we can compare those two vectors together to see how similar they are. Now they are similar because they both say I love, but they differ in what they love. So here it is. We calculate something called the distance. Now, as we can see here, the distance between love croissants and love parks is represented with red right here. And the closer the entire sentence is, the more relevant they are to each other. So that's a very basic overview of how embeddings and similarity search works. Now, there are much deeper dives on it on YouTube. I recommend if you wanna learn more, please go find it. But what we're gonna focus on today is actually writing code to do facial recognition. And it works the same way. Instead of sentences and text, we're taking images and we're converting the images into embeddings and seeing how similar those images are. So the first step we need to do is have a source image that we're gonna retrieve all the faces for. Now, here's a sample image. I'm gonna be using a different one and I'll show you that in a minute. But what it is looking for are all the faces in this image. So it has one, two, and three, perfect. Now I created this Google Colab, which you can use. I'll drop the link to this in the description below. So we're gonna need a few libraries to work with and I'll tell you what they are as we go through them. And the first one we're gonna need is this OpenCV-Python library. And that is an image recognition library. But we're gonna install all three of these things. I'll explain what the other two libraries are later. So go ahead, click play, and then run. So next we're on step one. We're gonna recognize all the faces from our source image. and to do that, we're gonna import this CV2 library, which is what we just installed. And then we have an algorithm. Now, this algorithm right here is already written for us. And we actually have to download it and import it into Google Colab. And it just gives us the tool necessary to recognize faces from an image. So to download it, and again, I'll drop this in the description below, we're gonna download this har cascade frontal face default.xml. And we just click this little download button right there. Next, we're gonna come back to Colab and we're gonna upload it to our Colab files. So you're simply gonna take that downloaded XML file and drag it right into this window right there. Then you're gonna right click on it and you're gonna say copy path. And then where it says alg equals, you're gonna replace this with the actual path of the file. There we go. Now it knows where to find it right here. Next, it's loading up the algorithm right there. We don't need to do anything. And then right here is where we have our source image. And for this one, I'm gonna be using an image of the Always Sunny from Philadelphia cast, one of my favorite shows. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna drag it over here as well. Okay, then we right click again, copy path, and we paste it in right there. 
All right, so now we have that source file. And again, what we're gonna be doing right here is just extracting all the faces it can find. And in fact, let me show you that image real quick. So here we go, here's the cast photo. Hopefully it grabs every single face from here. Sometimes it grabs most of them, not all of them, but even if it grabs most of them, that's okay. All right, next we're gonna load up the image. That's what's happening here. And then we create black and white versions of the image because honestly the color doesn't really matter when doing facial recognition. So that's what's happening here. And then here's where the magic is happening. We're actually detecting the faces from the image. Now there are a few settings here. Gray image is the actual image. Scale factor is the compression amount and we don't need to mess with that at all. Min neighbors is how many neighboring faces to find when it does find one. And we're gonna update this to be five. And then the minimum size in pixels of a face. And we'll leave that as 100 by 100. Then it's gonna detect all the faces. It's gonna cycle through it. That's what we're seeing here. And then it's going to create a JPEG of each face. And that's it, it's ready to go. So let's see it work. So we click play. Ah. I missed one step. Before we do that, we actually have to create a folder called stored faces, just like it is right here. So let's copy that. And then we'll come over here, right click, new folder, stored faces, hit enter. Now we'll run it again and it should work and it'll output the images to this stored faces folder. And there it is. Now let's take a look. Let's make sure it works right. So we'll double click on it and there it is. And again, and again, and again, and again. So it only grabbed five faces, so it's not perfect, but it's good enough. And if you adjust these settings here, you could get better results. But we don't need to for now. It'll be enough for me to show you how all this works. So now that we have each face extracted from that source file, what do we do with it? Now we need to convert those faces into embeddings. Now to do that, we actually need a vector database. And this is where Ivan comes in. We're gonna provision a vector database through Ivan. It's super simple. I'm gonna show it to you and it is completely free. So sign up for Ivan. And Ivan is a platform that can host all of your data and really adds an incredibly simple abstraction layer on top of all of these other cloud database providers. And they're especially good at AI data. It's ivan.io and once you do that, you're gonna be greeted with this dashboard. Click on projects and you're gonna create a project. And let's do it. Faces, my organization, everything else looks good. I'm just gonna say create project. Then you click create service. We're gonna select the PostgreSQL service and we're gonna use the Google Cloud trial account. And it gives us a bunch of trial credits. So we'll just use those for now. And everything else can be the same. Then you just click create service. Now this does take a little while, maybe five minutes, but we can track its progress pretty easily. Okay, so we have all this information. The thing that we're gonna need most of all is this service URI. And we can just copy to clipboard just like that. And then we click next. We don't need that. We could just keep clicking skip, skip, and then finish setup. And if you look right here, it says rebuilding. I believe it says online when it's done, but it turns to green when it's done. I forget exactly what it says. And so again, this might take a little while. So what we're gonna be doing when it's done and we can get it ready now is click this little quick connect button. And then we're gonna copy this from the terminal, run the following code. We're gonna click copy right there. And what we're doing is we're connecting to the database through PSQL through our terminal. Now, if we switch over to our terminal, here it is. And I tried doing that right now. It's gonna say could not translate host name and that's because it's not spun up yet. So again, it takes a little bit, but when it's ready, we will be able to connect and then I'll show you the next step of actually creating the vector database. Okay, it's done. It says running right there. So now let's switch back to our terminal and then we're gonna paste in that command that we copied, PSQL and then the Postgres endpoint that we copied, hit enter. Once you do that, it should say default DB right there, perfect. The first thing we need to do is create the extension vector. So let's do that. So here we go, create extension vector colon hit enter and then that's it next we need to create the table called pictures and that's what we'll be doing here so create table and this is just sql create table pictures and here are the columns it's going to have including the embedding vector column hit enter and now we're done so now our database is all set up for us I just switched back to Google Colab. Now what we're gonna be doing is creating the embedding. So converting those images into vectors. So here we're gonna import our libraries that we need to do those embeddings conversions. And here's the IMG beddings, which is what we installed earlier. Now right here, where we need to actually connect to our service URI. 
And to grab that, switch back to Ivan. And right here, service URI, we're just gonna click the copy button right there. And then we paste it in. So then it's gonna look for all of the files in stored faces. It's gonna open each of those files. We're gonna convert it into embeddings. And then right here, we're going to insert, we're gonna store those embeddings versions of the images in our vector database. And that should be it. We should be good to go. So let's do that. Click play. Okay, you could see all of the images are being converted. Perfect. And now they're stored in our database and it's done. That did not take long at all. Okay, now we need a new picture. So we have the source picture. We have all the faces from that source picture. Now we wanna get a new picture of someone from that original photo and see if we can match it. Now to do that, I grabbed this photo of Charlie Day and we're gonna upload that to Colab and then we're gonna convert it and then we're gonna look for matches. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna copy it over here by dragging and dropping and we have charlie.jpg. I'm gonna right click on it and say copy path. And then right here where it says file name, I'm gonna highlight that and replace it with charlie.jpg. And here it loads the file, it gets it ready for converting and then it converts it into an embedding. So let's do that. Okay, done. Now here's where the magic happens. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that new photo and we're gonna look in our old photo for any faces that look like that new photo. And we're doing that through embeddings similarity search. And the line that really does all the magic is right here. So it says select all from pictures and we're gonna order by the embeddings similarity. So it's gonna basically say, find all the pictures that we stored that are similar to the one that we're uploading right now. And then it's gonna tell us which one it is. So we don't actually have to change anything. Let's run it. And there we go. It worked perfectly. So here's the image from the original source photo. Here's the image that we just compared it to. And yep, that is the same person. Different photos, but it did a similarity search and it found the right person. So that's it. Now you know how to do facial recognition yourself and write it from scratch. How incredible is that? And of course, you can extend this code and get so much more sophisticated with it. I want to hear what you're thinking about building with this. Let me know in the comments below. So thank you again to Ivan for sponsoring this video and making it so easy to provision a database for embeddings use. And I'm going to drop a referral link in the description below to Ivan where you can get an additional $100 of free credits on top of the 300 that they already give you. So I really recommend checking them out. Thanks. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.